I'm going to put my notes out for sale. The great news is if you buy both of them, you're going to get bonus note. You can contact me via my email, renamariposa111 at gmail.com. Hi everyone, it's me Tina Amir and welcome to my channel. So for today, I just want to share with you my experience of renewing spouse visa for my husband. But you may listen to my story and just see around because I'm going to show you. I guess this is my first time showing you the place where we are staying. It's in Ipoh Perak to be exact. So this year, because of COVID and we are on MCO, we have to make appointment first online before we go to the immigration. If it's not because of this issue, we just simply go there to renew. So we decided just to print the form, fill and get verification from the Commissioner of O two days earlier because we didn't want to rush in the morning, the day when we're supposed to be there in the immigration. So it's always better to prepare early, right? And it took us about 30 to 40 minutes from our home to go to the immigration here in Meru. So this is the fifth year my husband's here. So it's been like five years of marriage. Some people who are so racist against marriage with the foreigners have no idea how procedure work in this country. They say something ridiculous like foreigners marry citizens just to get the citizenship. Let me tell you the whole situation so you know what to do in case if you are planning to marry Malaysian and settle down here in Malaysia. It's easy for you foreigners to marry Malaysian if you are an employment pass holder under category 1 or 2, which means you are a professional worker and also if you are a student. But if you are a work permit holder, this is going to be a problem. Work permit holders are not allowed to marry Malaysian. What you can do is cancel that work permit. Sorry to say, but that's how it goes. And then you need to go back to your country or just leave the country and if you are a man, you need to have a six months cooling off period. Which means if you cancel the work permit, you need to wait another six months before you enter this country. So what is cooling off period? So cooling off period means you cannot work here and you just need to rest forever. So in certain circumstances, you can apply for tourist visa. But this is not guarantee you will get it either. Sometimes it's just not possible. But in case if you may, you need to have some amount of money in the saving account as a proof that you won't be working during that cooling off period. Or another option, which is the best option to get the calling visa with reference and your wife must apply that for you. But for this one, it is not available in every immigration department in every state. So for this one, you will need to clarify with immigration at your place. So if you marry a Malaysian woman and you are a work permit holder, be prepared with the first one, which is to just wait outside of the country for six months. Yes, it is difficult. I cannot say much. Can you still have the job or you need to apply another job after that because it depends. And one most important thing for you to know, different immigration in different states sometimes have different rules. Which means whatever I tell you, please don't rely on this information 100% because it can be different in your state. And sometimes certain changes happen that rules doesn't exist anymore. So my husband came here with a tourist visa. So with tourist visa, you may marry Malaysian. But it's six months cooling off period because he's a man. So six months cooling off period after the marriage and his visa valid only for three months. So what we did was to leave the country for two times during this what we call as visa run. You don't have to go back to your country. 
just leave the country. So we left to Singapore as my family also there. I still remember how he was super nervous every time like this because when he reads experience online from others, it's risky. Sometimes the immigration officer just won't let you in. Um, I don't know the whole story of those people, so I cannot comment much. But we are lucky, Alhamdulillah, those two visa runs, because two times, right, were smooth journey. And what happened when you can apply spouse visa is given for six months in the beginning. So spouse visa actually stands for LTSVP, Long Term Social Visit Pass. So during this time, there will be visit from immigration officer to your home just to make sure you're really living together and not misuse the visa. And after that, you may get one year spouse visa. Actually, the longest we ever got was two years and that one time only. And last year, we got like one year and this year also one year. And this one year visa, they charge us like 110 ringgit. Oh, I forgot to mention, to apply for spouse visa or long-term social visit pass, LTSVP, you need some money with you. I think different rate between countries. Forgive me, I forgot about that. But I guess we had to pay like 2000 at that time. So this money will be returned back to you once you get your permanent residence or PR. If you still keep the receipt with you. So make sure don't lose it. And you can only apply PR, permanent residence, after five years of opening the file. My husband still not eligible for that. Shall next year. Okay, serious talk. There's no guarantee when you will get PR. Doesn't matter even if you are professional worker. I know some professional workers still waiting PR to be approved even after long years of waiting. And some people with regular jobs didn't even wait that long. So I guess it depends on the officer because PR, permanent residence also to, for that approval, you also need to attend interview. Some people die with permanent residence enhanced even after long, long years of living here in Malaysia and still not able to get the citizenship. So there's no such thing about marry a Malaysian to get a Malaysian citizenship because there's nothing guaranteed. That's why I said people who accuse foreigners marry Malaysian to get Malaysian citizenship is talking ridiculous. They have no idea how things are going here, but ignorant people won't bother to educate themselves. So nothing we can do about that. And very important thing for you to know, in case you're staying here, opening your file here in Peninsula, and basically you're getting your spouse visa here in Peninsula, and suddenly you need to move to Borneo. And for the application of PR, that five years counting started again when you are there. Even though Peninsula and Borneo, we are actually the same country, but they have also different rules. They're not only stayed here. So whatever is always checked, okay? So for the application of PR, that five years counting started again when you are there. Means all the years here just go to waste. You need to recount the years again. So imagine if you are four years in Peninsula and then you move to Borneo and transfer the file, you can only apply PR five years after opening the file there. So maybe for this case, just don't transfer the file. Just when it's time to renew the visa, come back to the same immigration center again in the peninsula. Yes, costly. You need to travel, time consuming. But I guess it's better than opening the file again, right? Especially if you want to apply for permanent residence. Uh, that info I got from immigration officer before. So like I said, whatever info I share, Please clarify again, it's sometimes different between states and different between time. Never consider only one person or two person information, seek for more information. And about don't move the file, I'm not sure it's the best idea. No need to just accept it. Of course, seek for other information.
and I like to share our horrible experience only when I was looking for information to get married and ask the religion officers and they were so racist and unhelpful and that is intolerable I mean even you don't like foreigner but my life has nothing to do with you same like your life has nothing to do with me anyway before we got married we met super wonderful religion officer other officer so he was the one that helping us like a lot to make it easy and another one horrible experience when immigration officer he was nice but he maybe forgot to tell us about the cooling off period for six months so when i wanted to get married i really wasn't prepared and i really didn't know where to look into except just asking the officer so yeah we didn't know about the cooling off periods and so we didn't even prepare mentally or anything for that and so my husband was shocked about that, almost admitted to the mental hospital, but luckily mental hospital just nearby. Okay, that one I'm just joking. Anyway, we are satisfied with immigration officers here. So far we had so far we had good experience. Everyone is nice, no one is rude. And in case in the future we want to move to a different state, we are considering to renew our visa here because they are very kind. Oh, by the way. If not because of COVID and online appointment, normally we just took the form from the immigration center, fill in, walk to the nearby commissioner of office across the street, and then wait again at the immigration center to send the form and to get approval. So if procedure so complicated, why my husband want to come and live here? When I was married, I was 25. Honestly, at that age, I never think about to settle down. At that age, I just enjoy having fun with friends and talking about fun. At that age, I don't think marriage is one of them. So me and my husband in long distance relationship, he was non-practicing Catholic. We had religion discussion, but it was never something I forced on him. Anyway, it was just relationship, you know. So you cannot just convert someone and one day maybe break out and what with his religion, right? I don't think it's something to play with. So we plan to get married someday, somewhere. But many things happen in life. We had to change our plans. So long story short, his life was turning upside down. And meanwhile, also he studied more about Islam and like the idea of being a Muslim. So he decided to become a Muslim. So when you are at some shift point in your life, in anything, not just religion, normally in the beginning, we are kind of like, we are so into it. So in his case, Islam is so foreign where he lives. So to practice easily, of course, we'll be moving to the Muslim country. And that's the idea of moving into this country came into the picture. But this was the beginning of a tough journey. So when he's here, he was sure what he was studying just doesn't fit the picture of the image of Muslim country. So there was a rebellious phase too, which add up to more depressing episode of life. Well, that's why we never judge any religion based on the people. We are human, but with time he gets it. Uh, I'm here in this place basically alone. So he's with me alone too. No family nearby and friends also very busy. It was actually a busy phase of my life. That just not the time to social that much because it was important examination year. And it was difficult to mingle with others too when you cannot speak and understand at all the culture, the language, you know. And what worse, it was everything on me to deal with because he understand nothing. Uh, I was pissed off because I was busy and had no time to deal with everything. I was pissed off too when he said he just didn't understand how and what to study. I just couldn't grasp at first. And we were so poor, there's no such thing about taking extra class and I was busy, no time to teach, just no time for that plus with that high stress level. And it was six months cooling off period, right? So not knowing language, having barrier to deal with almost everything, with money constraint. I don't know how to describe you how stressful it was for him and for me. And then many things happened, uh, long story short, I came to the idea to just put a Malay video online so he can watch and others as well. 
uh, because there's no like proper source to learn from scratch. But I just put few videos expecting no one would ever watch them. To my surprise, some of you messaged me months after that asking for more videos. And that's how everything started. And my husband's still learning. Even he's not fluent, but at least he can do things by himself. And you know, maybe you cannot speak well so confidently, but at least you know and you can understand if someone try to cheat you when you know the language. So that's really remove a lot of burden. So when I make videos as much as I can, I try to give more input because I remember that past hardship of time. And also the fact that we don't know until when we are around to. Um, I guess that's all my sharing. So if you're interested to know more about international relationship with the Malaysian, let me know and I can share more with you. Okay, thanks for watching. I'm going to put my notes out for sale. The great news is if you buy both of them, you're going to get bonus note. You can contact me via my email, renamariposa111 at gmail.com.